Admiral Thomas M. Dyker is retired. In this chapter of the Silent Service, we bring you the story of an exploit that occurred early in World War II. We choose to tell it because it is an outstanding example of skill, perseverance, the ability to calculate a risk, and to follow it with a command decision. I didn't mention nerve. This operation required plenty of it, but the ship's company of the USS Spearfish had that too. On the day our story opens, the Spearfish had been on patrol off Luzon in the Philippines for 45 days under the command of Lieutenant Commander James C. Dempsey from Mystic, Connecticut. He had been a top flight boxer at Annapolis, and he hadn't forgotten how to mix it. The executive officer was Lieutenant Charles B. Jackson, Jr., from Van Buren, Arkansas. The engineering officer was Lieutenant M. H. Austin, from Altus, Oklahoma. Figuring that we've got to stay submerged during daytime until we get south of Java, it's going to take us 21 days to make Fremantle, Australia. I'm commencing to forget what daylight looks like. Yeah, it's sure going to feel good to get that sun on our backs again. Yeah, my heart's bleeding for you guys. I notice when you're in port, you never get up till the sun goes down. How old are you, Captain? I'm 33. What's that got? <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought you might like to go with us sometime. But at your age, I, uh, I doubt if you could take it. That's for sure. Why, I could be 20 years older and outlast you dudes at anything. Oh, now, wait a minute, Captain. Those Aussies have some games down there they don't even have a name for. You know, every time I look at the chart of Australia, I can just taste that bitter beer. Message, Captain. Well, looks like you're going to have to do your tasting by remote control a little while longer, Si. This orders us into Corregidor tomorrow night to take out some important people. Rendezvous set for 10 o'clock. You suppose it could be MacArthur? I don't know. It could be. Let's take a look at the local chart. The Japanese are running a patrol around the rock, but we ought to be able to move in on the surface to a point of about 20 miles before they force us under. If we can, it'll give us a nice easy run in tomorrow, submerged. Yeah, and leave enough in the battery to get out again if we don't get a chance to recharge. We'll dive right here, Charlie. Hey, Pop, the chief of the boat knows everything. When do we get back to Australia? We don't. We what? All I know is we're headed for Corregidor and we're turning up full speed to get there. Oh, that does it. Them apes on the sailfish will beat me to it again. They headed for the barn yesterday. Hey, I'm the one who knows what gives. Who told you? The captain. All right, all right. If them monkeys on the sailfish beat you to that same redhead in Fremantle, they'll be doing you a favor. Now, wait a minute, Pop. I got a great gal there. So would everybody else. <laughs> the spearfish headed for Corregidor under the cover of night. Since she could cover only about 40 miles submerged without recharging, Skipper had intended to run the last 20 miles underwater. However, the enemy had other ideas. <laughs> Can't be at the diving point already. No, it's Japanese. Patrol line of destroyers. They see us? I don't think so. That's security. Let's take a look. They're a little on the starboard bow, Captain. I see them. It is smelling your own out there. Well, if they'd seen us, they'd be barreling over this way by now. Yeah, you're right. We'll just go deep and ease by them. Take her down to 250 feet. 250 feet. Aye, aye, sir. 10 degrees down bubble. It'll be daylight in about an hour. That means we'll have to stay submerged all the way into the rock now. Well, it'll be about 30 miles instead of the 20 we figured on. We'll make it in all right, but if we can't find a way to charge batteries, we're going to have trouble getting out. May not be so bad in there. They might even meet us with a brass band. Hmm? Ever occur to you they might not meet us at all? What do you mean by that, Captain? Suppose the Japs captured the rock last week, or last night, or even today. They'd have a reception for us, but it wouldn't be the kind we'd like. That's right. 
If our codes have been captured, the Japanese could have sent the message requesting that we pick up these people in the first place. It's not likely. It's possible. We'll know better when we get closer to Corregidor. Captain to the conning tower. Captain to the conning tower. Captain? Oh. Japanese patrol boats up ahead. They are more than five miles from Corregidor. Seems to me if the rock was still in our hands, the guns would keep these buzzards further away. Those guns have got a range of over twice that far. Maybe that patrol line this morning let us by on purpose. It's closing in behind us. If this is a trap and we fall into it, we'll be the biggest suckers of the war. I've been doing a lot of thinking about this the past couple of hours. What you boys say is true, but it's not conclusive. The patrol boats are no threat to the people on the rock. And if they're running low on ammunition, they can use it better someplace else. Well, that's sure right. But if we get in there and they jump us before we have a chance to recharge the battery, we're going to have some fun getting past these patrol lines on the way out, right? Well, there's one thing you got to remember, Charlie. If they hadn't needed us, the force commander wouldn't have ordered us in here. But we got to take a chance. Well, I just hate to look so fat, dumb, and happy, that's all. We're not going to get caught that way. We'll just go deep now and under this next patrol line. When we get to the rendezvous point, we'll settle on the bottom. I just hope the Japanese haven't mined the area. Me too. I have men standing by to destroy all the secret papers and equipment. Pop Anderson's rigging some extra bunks in the torpedo room. Fine. Sai. You know the arrangements for destroying the secret matter. Yes, sir. Well, now look. No matter what happens up there, I don't want you to come topside. If the people who board us turn out to be Japanese, or if we get shot up, I just want you to close the hatches and die. The ship must not be captured. Aye, aye, sir. Now, how much battery have we got left? No, it's well over half gone. It'll never take us past the outer patrol line. We've got to charge. Darken the control room and conning tower. Aye, aye, sir. Get the gun crews ready. Gun crews, assemble in the control room. Gun crews, assemble in the control room. I can't hear anything, Captain. It's all clear. Very well. Everything's ready, Captain. All right, let's go, Julie. Surface! Here, Captain. Oh, it's still a little early yet. Blink a light on the port beam. They're making a recognition signal. It's not the right one. Are you sure? Yes, sir. Positive. Stand by on the gun. Hey, you all. Is that the spearfish? If that all's a Japanese, he's from South Nagasaki, boy. <laughs> Come alongside! You can start the battery charge now, Charlie. Right, Captain. Up forward here, gentlemen. Down his hatch here. Watch your step. Hey, you're Dave. Oh, it can't be. It's just the Army. Army. Hello. Hello. Hey, you know something? This is just like hitting a jackpot. You're telling me. Uh, where do we go? You know, we've been preparing for you girls all afternoon. Now, here's a nice bunk right here. Yeah, right here. Yeah, right here. You gentlemen will find your bunks in here. You girls follow me. We're going to give you the chief's quarters, all to yourselves. Oh, that sounds nice, but will we be taking up too much room? Well, now, you haven't seen the chief's quarters, miss. <laughs> oh, 
They're all below decks, Captain. The hatches are closed. Fine, Anderson. Thanks. Tell the exec to stay right here for a couple of hours while we put a charge in the battery. Hey, some of them army guys move around like my Aunt Fanny. Well, what do you mean? Well, they wouldn't lift anything heavy and they sashayed around like dolls. Well, you had a good reason to. They are dolls. They're nurses, over half of them. The rest of them are Army and Navy officers. Women in a submarine, that's bad luck. Yeah, and we got 13 of them. 12 Army and one Navy. Oh, we'll never get out of here. Patrol boats, we gotta get out of here. Secure the charge. Clear the bridge. Dive! Japanese gun. We dive now. Oh, I wish I'd stayed on Corregidor. Having picked up her cargo, the submerged submarine now had to work her way past the evening patrols. Bring her around to course 235. You are heading for our own minefield, Captain. That's right, Charlie. When we get there, we're going to go right along the edge of it. So my guess the Japanese know exactly where it is. They won't come anywhere near us now. I just hope it's where we think it is. I'm just as frightened as the rest of you. But there's nothing we can do about it. There's only four bunks. Now how can 13 of us possibly sleep? Hey, Stuart! Aren't there some other bunks for us? No, lady. Bunks all full. Captain say all nurses stay here. Well, there's nothing we can do about it. We'll divide the day into three eight-hour periods, with four of us sleeping at a time. That only makes twelve. There are thirteen of us. Oh, well, we'll draw lots. And whoever gets number thirteen has to sleep on the floor. <laughs> I'm so tired I could sleep standing up. We ought to turn right now, Captain. Well, what's the course to run parallel to the edge of the minefield? Uh, two eight five. Bring a right to two eight five. The patrol boats have stopped their propellers. It's working. They won't come any closer. Now, I want you to rig the ship for silent running. Shut down the air conditioning, ventilation blowers, fans, whatever else you can to save electricity. We're still going to have to be lucky to get out of here. Aye, right, sir. Are you girls getting along all right? <laughs> yeah, we're just fine. I'm sorry, we just can't spare the electricity to run the air conditioning. Well, we can stand it if you can. Well, there's one thing I can't stand, and I'm going to do something about it right now. Where are those shears I saw? Ah. Oh. <laughs> you know that's an idea. Here, let me help you. Well, as soon as you're through, miss, would you please come forward? I've got some gadgets in the torpedo room I've got to explain to you girls. Yeah, oh, thank you. We'll be with you in a minute. Good. So you shouldn't have any trouble with the shower or the wash basins or any of the rest of those gadgets. I know it must seem like an awful lot of valves and gauges, but they're all plainly marked. Any questions? Yeah. How long do you say it would take us to get to Australia? I don't see a thing, Charlie. Maybe this is our chance. It's an hour and a half before daybreak. If we can charge the batteries that long, we can thumb our noses at them tomorrow. Yeah. Propeller noises during one zero five. Up scope. Take her down two hundred feet. Two hundred feet. Aye, aye, sir. Ten degrees down, boat. Started up his search gear. He's passing overhead. The 
destroyer apparently never knew that she had passed right over the spearfish. But for the submarine, the chance to surface and revitalize her air and depleted batteries before sunrise was lost. And to surface in those waters in daylight was suicide. It was bad enough on the old hands, and the passengers were having a rough initiation. I haven't had a chance to welcome you girls aboard. My name is Dempsey. I'm the commanding officer. Are you comfortable? Comfortable? In this heat? I've just never been so uncomfortable in my life. I wish those Japanese would just come and get it over with. Well, it won't really hurt you to be uncomfortable for a little while. You don't look like you've had any sleep for a week. Have you? Please forgive me, Captain. You've risked your life to take us out of there and... I sound like I don't appreciate it. What is the last time you did sleep? Well, it was pretty rough out there on the rock. None of us has slept much for ten days. Well, you'll feel better when you get your turn in the bunk. I don't get one. See, there's four bunks, thirteen of us. I'm the lucky one. I drew the floor. Drew the floor? Why didn't you say so? Well, I'm not a sissy. Not all the time. Well, I'll tell you what we'll do. I have to be up when we're on the surface in enemy waters. So I won't be using my bunk at night. You're welcome to it. You need your rest? You just be out of it by seven. I'll sleep in the daytime. You just don't know how good that sounds. Now, until we're able to get clear of these patrol boats, able to surface and recharge our batteries, I won't be using that bunk at all. It'll take at least another 18 hours. So you're welcome to it as of right now. Oh. Come on, I'll show you. Wash basin's there, so just make yourself at home. At last, the welcome cover of darkness descended. I don't know how we made it. It doesn't figure. Battery company must have built in some good gremlins. God bless them. Well, let's get some air. Surface! This air sure feels great. Yeah, it doesn't smell so good though, does it? I'm willing to get used to it. We'll just mark it down to unexpected pleasures. All that full. Yes, who is it? Stuart, lady. Coffee? Oh, thank you. Uh, Here, clean clothes. Oh, how nice. Whose are they? Crew, send all ladies. They take shower now. Oh, shower, that's for me. What's the can for? We're on surface now. Maybe I get seasick. Oh. Hi. Hi. Um, Permission to come on the bridge? Permission granted, with pleasure. My, it's a pretty night. So quiet. Yeah, it sure is a fine night, all right. Real quiet. No sign of trouble. It's the best kind. Now, I'm awfully ignorant, but just how does trouble show itself? Well, I keep a sharp eye out for smoke, for mass, planes. But usually the first warning comes from the lookouts. They can't afford to take their eyes off the ocean for a second. They're up there. Uh, Under normal circumstances, they can. Normal circumstances. I guess it was pretty rough back there, wasn't it? It was just horrible. 
I can't seem to stop thinking about those guys we left there. Yeah. How close we came to. Look, how do you get used to a thing like that? You don't get used to it. It's the same way for all of us. You just have to learn to live with it. All right, you guys won't see any smokestacks down here. <laughs> Woo! I don't have to wait, do I? No, dig right in. Oh, a head of lettuce. I've been waiting six months for this. <laughs> When the spearfish reached the relative safety of the Indian Ocean, two phenomena occurred, both natural. The weather was cooling off, and the eternal feminine emerged. Every time I look at my face, I shudder. Give me the lipstick, will you? I'm sorry, it's all gone. All gone? Well, how long do you think one lipstick can last with 13 of us using it? Well, don't worry. I'll have the auxiliary man make you some out of red lead. It's no joking matter. It's bad enough to go ashore with cut-off dungaree shorts and, and field shoes. And now no lipstick. <laughs> and they say it's cool in Fremantle at this time of the year, too. Yeah, I know. And Mr. Jackson says the breezes blow up the river. That's right, they do. I tell you what, maybe we can sneak ashore when it gets dark. Now, how can you disappoint a thousand men? You mean a thousand men will be on that dock when we get there? Why, sure, maybe more. Oh, no. Have the communications officer send that out right away. Aye, aye, sir. Oh. Dresses! Hey, look, stocking! Oh, hi, his shoes! We'll be alongside the dock in one hour. All hands shift to clean uniform of the day. The clean uniform of the day. You heard him, girls. Let's get into it. With our passengers now properly uniformed, the spearfish finally entered the great Allied base at Fremantle. Goodbye, Captain. We'll never forget you. That's from all of us to the whole ship's company. Thank you. Thank you. Captain M.H. Austin, United States Navy, who is the engineering officer of the USS Spearfish, is with us. And it is with a great deal of pleasure that I introduce him to you. Hello, Cy. It must make you feel good to think that your ship saved those 25 people from the rock. Yes, it was one of the most satisfying things we did in the whole war. They must have been a really fine group. They were a fine group. After hearing what those women went through on Batan and Corregidor, I felt like the submarines were having it easy. The women were enduring the same hardships the men were, washing out of a helmet and working around the clock when it was necessary. The nurses had such a nice life in peacetime that we used to wonder whether they could take it when the going got rough. They showed they could throughout the whole war, and my hat's off to them. Yes, and I'm sure the nation's hat is off to you and the fine crew of the USS Spearfish. It has been a real honor to have had you with us. Please be with us again when the silent service brings you another exciting submarine story. <laughs>